All right. Hello, everybody. Um, I am back. Um, hopefully you joined, you were in my last session, um, but if not, um, I'm Deborah Livingston. I am the CEO of Reemployability, also the owner of the company. And I have with me today our HR professional rock star, Crystal Hundley. Hi, Crystal. Hello. <laughs> and um, Crystal actually uh, is a graduate of University of Maryland with a Bachelor's of Science in Human Resources and a Master of Business Administration from Webster University. She's also a SHRM certified professional. This this gal knows what she's talking about. And uh, most recently was the HR director for HART, which is the Hillsborough Area Transit Authority here in the Tampa Bay area and Lowe's Home Improvement Stores. Crystal is um, a military spouse and she served as the training director for the Marine Corps Community Services, where she helped families and military officers develop various life skills. And she has brought to reemployability just this incredible energy, uh, comprehensive human resources experience, um, including planning, training, development, and evaluating all of our HR initiatives. And, um, and she's also helped us through all of these crazy nuances of COVID um, and helped create our new way forward for our company. And I'm so excited, Crystal, to share you with the work comp industry. I, I'm trying to protect you and keep you all to myself, but <laughs> I'm excited to share you with everybody. And um, and you guys that are viewing uh, will find that she's not a people person at all. No. Not at all a people person. Not, <laughs> quiet. Um, this session is meant to be interactive. So we're gonna be doing polls and we really are gonna encourage you to answer questions and be involved. Otherwise you're just gonna be listening to me and Crystal just banter back and forth and fix our hair in this. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Well, thanks for having me. Um, and definitely, if you are here to just listen, this isn't going to work because uh, we want to hear from you as well. Um, something that I think about is as much as I've experienced with human resources, COVID HR has really been different. Yes. And it's got us thinking about different things. It's got us um, interacting a little bit differently with how we go to work. So I want to throw uh, some thoughts out there. And this first thing I want to talk about is in this time of us thinking about pandemic, it's on our mind for everything. We're concerned with everything being contagious, right? <laughs> um, when an employee feels let down by their employer uh, in their time of need, perhaps being injured, that sentiment uh, can spread much faster in some cases than COVID-19. The same is true when employees feel supported they are provided with a way to get back to meaningful work and contribute to their families and their community. This positive impact can spread so quickly throughout your workforce. I wanna ask you, this is our first poll question, uh, which of these po uh, following positive factors have you experienced when employees felt their employer advocated for them? So we've got a couple here um, for question number one. Which of the following positive factors have you experienced when employees felt that their employer advocated for them? Let's see, is that poll going up? I see the question there, but I don't see the... Excellent. So the options there are increase in productivity, decrease in workplace stress, decrease in turnover, and lower absenteeism. And, you know, Deborah, sometimes I think about maybe multiple of these factors were felt um, yes. whenever an employee is, is really feeling supported and feeling like they are plugged into a, to a community, that sense of community that really appreciates them and supports them and tell them that what they're doing matters. <laughs> Absolutely, and I think, I think we learned this um, even more so in the last 18 months, gosh, going on almost two years ago now with COVID, right? And, right. Um, and how we had to engage and learn to engage differently with our employees, um, even, even those, those that are not injured, and then throw an injury on top of that, and it becomes that much more critical, That's right? right? So, right. Um, all right, this is like that, that Jeopardy moment or where you're right. like, like we should be playing. Yeah. We should be playing the music, Crystal, and you know, waiting you for those answers to come. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So it looks like um, some of you saw a decrease in turnover and some of you saw increase in productivity. That's fantastic. So uh, the next question is going to be as this world, this whole business world, every industry is moving toward a post COVID-19 normal, right? We talk about the new normal over and over again. Employees are continuing to return to work. What barriers have you had to overcome in creating the new way ahead? So it may be something like creating flexible schedules, uh, creating hybrid work arrangements. Maybe it's changing the way work is done. Or honestly, we're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> we don't have it solved yet. So what barriers are you able to overcome or have you had to overcome to help create the dreaded new normal? <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting to see what people um, say here because um, so many of this are things that we had to face as an employer and going, first of all, from that shift to being fully in the office to 100% remote, which felt like it happened overnight. Right, right. So, and then um, here in Florida, um, a lot of people didn't have the same experience, but here in Florida, we opened up relatively quickly. So then we had to contend with people that were still afraid to come back to the office, maybe approaching it in a hybrid way because so many people also wanted to come back to the office. And initially we had this wave of like, I think almost 90% of our staff came back right. and then everybody started getting scared again. And they wanted to go remote. So we kind of had this back and forth happening for a while. I feel like it's settled now, though, don't you? I think so. Uh, but, you know, something that that comes to mind is we also had schools closed. Right. So on top of the fear, on top of, um, you know, moving to a remote potential uh, option for, for a short period of time, at least, we also had kiddos at home. <laughs> so we That's were so true. juggling yeah. a lot of challenges that the whole, you know, our, our workplace and most workplaces were not set up for. So one of the things we, like, one of the things we talked about in the last session was understanding the whole person and what they're dealing with, that's um, so you know, and, and, you know, like you just said, I had completely forgotten about school and, and so many parents were homeschooling and remote working. And then when the offices came back open or will be coming back open, um, they have to make all those necessary adjustments. It's, it's no different than what our injured workers face. That's right. Yeah. Well, it looks like uh, some of the barriers that you all were able to overcome by creating a new way was creating those flexible schedules and just, I think, being flexible in general, right? Creating, um, being creative, I think, as we come up with solutions for our employees. So have you felt that some of the barriers, the same barriers that exist when trying to return an employee back to work after a work-related injury. Um, it's the same types of things that maybe we felt with bringing our workforce back to the office. So I, wanna, I want you to go into the chat and tell me your thoughts on why you think sometimes it's more difficult to bring that one back than it has been to bring the entire workplace back. Why is that? Jot down your thoughts. Let's see if anybody has any thoughts. <laughs> I think sometimes there is that that thought that, you know, this individual is it is more difficult because it's an individual versus everybody being on the same playing field. But if we're right. being honest, we haven't all been on the same playing field. We have had, as we mentioned, childcare issues, transportation issues, health issues and concerns. Um, there's been a variety of factors that have impacted our employees in the workplace on different levels. Each one of them has had a unique set of barriers that they've had to overcome to get back here. Yeah. And I, I would say that, you know, like for, even from my perspective, like as a, um, a woman, a woman owned business and leader um, in our own organization, I've always had empathy um, across the board. But I think COVID really gave me some perspective 
on the challenges that our employees face today, and especially in this COVID world. Um, and, and all of the back and forth with the schools, whether they were open, closed, hybrid, you know, everything that they were dealing with and um, remembering that um, our employees are no different than we are. That's right. Right. They're dealing with the same exact level of stress that we're dealing with. And, and when, when we talk about injured workers, um, again, um, it's compounded because now you're throwing an injury on top of that fear and anxiety that um, any any worker would face. Right. Right. So the next question I have, um, it's another poll question, and it's regarding expectations from your employer regarding return returning to the office post covid so this one you have the option you can either respond in the poll or you can applause you can choose the applause button if you have received clear expectations from your employer regarding what it looks and feels like to return back to the office what are those expectations so let's see we have a we have a comment um, yes. from Rosemary. Um, she says, "My entire work is based within the injured worker community. I find that each of them are struggling to understand what they are directed to do when when their return to work requirement runs counter to health rules as outlined by the government." Wow. Well, it shouldn't ever, right, Crystal? I'll let you respond to that as an HR professional. <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's just, I think that's par for the course with the miscommunication in anything, whether it's injured workers or not. As soon as we give unclear or conflicting direction, it just exacerbates the uncertainty and that overwhelming feeling that our employees have. So we need to make sure that the directions that we're given um, are taking that employee first mentality and that we're we're matching it up with regulations, current guidance, um, laws, any type of policies. We need to make sure it's aligned because otherwise we're gonna just be adding more to the worry that our people are feeling. Right, more stress and more anxiety. And, and I always um, tell our customers that work comp return to work is no different than any return to work. I mean, I would agree. The, the communication and I mean, whether it's someone returning from an FMLA leave or maternity or whatever it is, um, it should be treated the same way. So whatever those rules and regulations are, requirements are for those same things, it, it should apply for return to work. It should be the same across the board. No That's different. That's right. With a lot of communication. And maybe even more communication. That's right. I think we learned through COVID in our company that over communication was better. The more we communicated um, with our employees, the better it was. The better, um, they, better they were, the better we, we were for it all across the board. Yeah. That's right. So, uh, some. So, thank you, Rosemary, for that comment. I appreciate that. Does anybody else have any thoughts or, or feedback on their overall COVID experience and if that changes their perspective on return to work for our injured workers? in our industry. I like that you mentioned, Deborah, that it was um, really just enhancing your thoughts on empathy. Yes. And, and I think that that's something that we probably all were, we had a notion of, but it really allowed us to put the exclamation point on how we're going to handle things, whether it's being a little bit more compassionate for child care issues and concerns, health care issues and concerns. It really allows us to treat the employee as that whole person, knowing that they, in, in a lot of cases, they've got the weight of the world on their shoulders uh, when they walk in our building and when they walk out. And so whatever we can do as employers to um, make it a little easier on them, let them know that what they're contributing here in the workplace matters to us. And it's going to directly tie into their success. Hopefully, that'll ease their their worry, um, at, you know, at home. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that um, I think sometimes we get so caught up in what our own job is, what our role is, and whatever our organization is. Whether you're an attorney, adjuster, managed care nurse, whatever your whatever your role is in your organization, that we do tend to forget that there's that human being receiving on the other end 
um, information or benefits or whatever it is. And sometimes we need to just remember to put ourselves in their shoes, okay. you know, and, and um, I actually had to do a lot of that through COVID because I was, my perspective as, you know, an owner of a business and trying to save my company obviously was very different than what my employees were experiencing. Right. So I had to learn that. And, and it and wasn't I, easy. It wasn't easy. Even into that communication again, mm -hmm. the the fact that through COVID and other uh, situations, I communicate the same message over and over again throughout the day. And I might, you know, we we've been there. We might feel annoyed or oh, I have to say this again. Exactly. But for the person who's receiving that information, it's the first time they're hearing it. Um, so just remembering to have that compassion patience um, and empathy as we navigate together, whatever comes ahead. Yeah. Well, um, I'm going to get kind of say that's a wrap. I know that we didn't have as many viewers as we had hoped today, but hopefully those that were here were able to have a few little takeaways and pearls and um, and get to, to see what a great HR person we have here at Reemployability. And um, we take our lead from her and all the things that we do, even related to the injured workers we serve. So thank you everybody for um, your time today. And I guess we're just gonna leave the room and give people back a few minutes. Excellent, have a great day. And Thanks enjoy everyone. Bye.